intestines are a tube. Uh, the, the GI tract, the gastrointestinal tract is a tube. It goes from the mouth to the other end. And it's about 20, 25 feet long. And the inside, uh, uh, well, and the tube winds around and twists inside your abdomen. The inside of the tube is lined with shag carpeting. One shag is where calcium is absorbed. The next, next shag, magnesium. The next shag, iron. Uh, the other shags over here, uh, the B vitamins. The shags over on this side, the good fats. Shags over here, the amino acids that make up proteins. All the shags absorb different nutrients. The shags are covered with a cheesecloth. The cheesecloth only lets certain size molecules get through. Just like your grandmother making gravy, she'd pour the gravy in the cheesecloth and only the liquid would come out the other end. All the clumps of flour would be stuck in the cheesecloth. They couldn't get through. Only the smaller molecules get through the cheesecloth. That's the way that we absorb food in our intestines is through the cheesecloth that's covering the shags. Now, what happens with intestinal permeability is that you get tears in the cheesecloth. And if you get tears in the cheesecloth, you get these larger molecules getting through, like the clumps of gravy. These larger molecules get through into the bloodstream, and your brain says, whoa, what's this? This is not good for me. This is not a tool I can use to make new muscle or new bone cells or new brain cells or new brain hormones called neurotransmitters. This is not a raw material like bricks and mortar that I can build new tissue out of. I better fight this. And the brain sends a message to the immune system saying, immune system, fight this. So you get this larger molecule coming through. It's called a macro molecule, a big molecule. It's coming through. And the immune system starts making antibodies to that bigger molecule to fight it. So if that bigger molecule was a molecule of apple, you now start making antibodies to apples. Or if it's to beef, you now start making antibodies to beef. Or it's to um, couscous, you make antibodies to couscous, or to lamb, or to basil, or to strawberries, or bananas. And these are the people that are allergic to 15, 20, 25 different foods when they check on a blood test. And they're not allergic to 25. Well, they are, I guess, because the immune system's responding. But when you heal the intestinal permeability and these macromolecules can't get through any longer, it'll take three to six months. But the antibodies to basil and beef and all those things start to go down and they go away so that uh, you don't have elevated levels of antibodies anymore. Here's an example. We know that autoimmune diseases are the number three cause of getting sick and dying in the world. It's called morbidity and mortality. The number three cause. You know, and if someone has MS, they go to a neurologist. If someone has psoriasis, they go to a dermatologist. If someone has rheumatoid arthritis, they go to a rheumatologist. Everyone goes to specialists, depending on what their symptoms are, and they get a diagnosis of an autoimmune condition. But the mechanisms that cause these autoimmune conditions are very, very similar, very similar. And the research started coming out back in 2005, saying that, you know, there's a trilogy in the development of autoimmune conditions that seem to be common in most of them if not all, this trilogy is first, you've got a genetic vulnerability to that particular condition. And, you know, it's like if you pull at a chain, the chain always breaks at the weakest link. It could be at one end, the middle, the other end. It's your heart, your liver, your brain, your kidney, your spleen, wherever your genetic weak link is, that's the deck of cards you were dealt in life. That's not going away. That's your genes. So the first in the development of autoimmune conditions is a genetic vulnerability. The second thing in the development of autoimmune conditions is uh, environmental triggers, the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, just too much insult to the body and that tissue gets damaged and boom, here it comes, here come the symptoms. So the environmental triggers that build up that we're exposed to. And the most common environmental trigger that we have in this world today is food. We eat two, three, four times a day, every day. 
and nothing gets as much exposure to the inside of our bodies as what we put in our mouths. Uh, so if we look at that for a moment, the food that we choose to eat as the category of an environmental trigger, that some of these things are triggers, that they're not the best food. And the third thing that's been identified in the development of autoimmune conditions, number three cause of getting sick in the world, is intestinal permeability. So our researchers have said you can arrest, meaning stop, the development of autoimmune disease if you heal the gut. That's why intestinal permeability is so important to consider. Do I have intestinal permeability? And if you do have intestinal permeability, if it's identified, it's so important to treat it thoroughly so that you stop throwing gasoline on the fire in your brain if that's where the weak link is, or you stop throwing gasoline on the fire in your blood vessels if that's where your genetic weak link is, and you stop throwing gasoline on the fire in your gallbladder if that's where your genetic weak link is.